I think when you get to this point where you've made so many films and also co-produced and acted and all the rest of it, you start, you know, and, and time is running out, you know, for all of us. You kind of, you find your stride, you find your groove, and I found, you know, the films I really love are, like, obviously, Basic Instinct. Ninety <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> nineties thrillers. Um, and also, because I did a lot of horror when I started out just directing, but even when I was, you know, even as a fan watching films, when I started watching horror, then as you mature, you go into the thrillers, you know, and you get, it gets more psychological. So that's probably me just contr a trying to find my strut and my groove, but also giving back to the films I actually really love. Right, yeah. right. And what were some of the key influences? What were some of the films aside from Basic Instinct? Was there any particular films that influenced the writing of Lady Terror? There's one, and you guys probably noticed at the end, I dedicated it to Corey Haim. Um, I had Corey attached to a film when I was starting out, and unfortunately he passed away. And one of the films he was in, Blown Away, with um, him and Feldman, uh, was one of the films I kept re-watching when I was thinking about making that movie. And it must have stuck into my limbic system or my subconscious because um, when I came back to do this film, that kept coming up and I, and I found myself watching it and re-watching. And then the, I guess the next question was, you know, how am I going to find a co-star? <laughs> you know, it was really tricky. Um, that's where Fee came in. Um, so, yeah, I guess just part of the process. Right. Yeah. Right. And Fee, can you tell us a little bit about being cast for the film? Being cast, I don't know, it was so long ago. Um, came into the studio. Yeah, came into the studio, met Dia, met Nate, um, did a little bit of the script, I can't remember which bit. Did two yeah. scenes. Yeah, yep. did a couple of scenes, had a little new chat. Um, I don't know, I feel like when you leave a casting, you kind of don't know if you can get it or not, and you just kind of leave it at the door and see what happens, but... Surprisingly enough, this one came back, so... The, the interesting thing with Fee was, uh, it was her voice. Um, I felt like I knew the character so well, and when she came in, and obviously she looked stunning, and she can act, but when she spoke, I went, oh, and it, it just kind of resonated with me. I was like, oh, that's the character. Right. So it was very, uh, very unique experience. And what was the process like preparing to play the character? Did Nathan give you the script or some sort of backstory as to your character or anything? How did that sort of come about? Um, I think on the day he gave me a bit of a backstory. I think four as well, actually. Yeah, a bit of a synopsis, a bit of a character description. Um, and then, yeah, just worked on it from there. Did he yeah. force you to watch any of the 90s erotic films? He films? actually I did. did not have your <laughs> he suggested a whole list of basic instinct and all that jazz, yeah. So, um, did a bit of homework. And Dia, yeah, this is, uh, is this your third feature that you've shot with Nathan, Nathan's directed or? Uh, this, I mean. It's our 10th job. 10th job. But probably second feature that you docked. Second fiction feature. I've did you do, a few docos. Did you do colorblind or eye portrait? <laughs> portrait? I, I did eye portrait, yes. When I was uh, very new to cinematography. So, <laughs> um, and I, because that film, I had to match it someone else's camera. I shot on my lesser camera. So this was the first time I shot on my good camera. So. Yes. Yeah, we're on we're on like digital SLR and portrait, but this was obviously the USA. Right, right. And what what is the working dynamic between you two, having worked with each it's other so on good. documentaries <laughs> and other feature yeah. shorts and <laughs> even your own film? You know, like a couple of people recently said, "Oh, I, um, you know, Dia rang me the other day, and oh, for a second I thought it was you." You know, I was like, "Well, yeah, it's a woman's voice, but um, <laughs> but you know, the my mum says that too." No. It's like Nathan Hill. I'm like, no, no, Mom, Mom, it's me. Like, oh, oh, okay. But yeah, Dia, you know, and, and as you know, I know a lot of filmmakers in Melbourne, but with Dia, we just we just clicked. Yeah. And uh, her style is very similar to my style in the way I want to shoot. And uh, and I trust her so much. Um, and so, you know, so many days where I just say, this is the scene. This is what we're going to do. Then we do a, a run through with the actors. She'll stand back and watch, kind of almost composing on a spot. Yeah. And then we jump in, and I and I would give her tests as well. <laughs> her trial by fire is an amazing story because we did a short film, and I put her in a room filled with mirrors. It was like Enter the Dragon. It was a DOP's worst nightmare. 
and that yeah. was your uh, trial by fire, and you actually nailed it. Vampire Hooker Hotel, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a brothel. It was a brothel, and I remember I got there, and uh, it's four walls, mirrors, and the ceiling, and the scene consists of four different actors, and I had to get shots of all four of them, singles, singles and then uh, a full shot, and I'm like, I, I, there's no way I can hide. No way I, I'm gonna be seen, but for, I don't know how I did it. Uh, I managed to not be seen in any of the shots. Nailed it. So, oh God. And, and also I just wanna say as well, um, it, from film school, um, I took a risk on a female who wanted to be a DOP, and this is a long time ago when, you know, I hate to say it, but it was male predominant um, and I really liked this girl's vision and I, and I got her to dot my first short and it just kind of stuck with me. I, I feel like when, when a woman shoots one of my films and a man shoots one of my films, it's, it's a different eye and it's a different energy. Um, and so, yeah, we stuck together and it's worked out well. Yeah, yeah. Girl, what was that, 2016? Yeah, it's funny because um, in film school I was doing an internship and they put me onto Nathan at, and at first I oh, was SAE. like, yeah, yeah, SAE. And Sorry. they're like, oh, this guy needs a camera assistant. And I jumped on board and then I got promoted very quickly. And yeah, 10 films later, here we are. Boom. Yeah. And Dio, I believe you actually choreographed one of the fight sequences in the film. Can you tell us a little bit about oh, that? Was it, uh, was no, a, I, I didn't. The oh, no, but oh. She, she chose. Oh, she chose. Would, okay, okay, that's a good story. But can you tell us why? Um. So is why, this why the, did you choose a different? Because Nathan typically can, does a lot of his own fight choreography. Can, I, can, I, throw in, can yeah. I throw in a little thing? Yeah. So I just done like Revenge of the Guaylo, which is like got more martial arts than any other film I've seen in Melbourne. How many people here have seen Revenge of the Guaylo? <laughs> and for the people that haven't seen it, you need to you see, need it to see it immediately. <laughs> need. Is that available on any uh, streaming oh, services it's on, currently? It's on it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember you know having you know coming in filming. Like, yeah, this is my fight scene, and you know we're going to do it. And I know how to do this, and I'll choreograph it. And let's go. And Gia said, "But I, I want it to be good." <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the shooting of it to be good. I am a, I focus on drama mainly, and dialogue scenes, and beautiful shots. But when it came to a fight scene. I was a bit nervous, and so yeah. I spoke to a friend of mine, Scott David Lister, and I'm like, hey, Scott, Scotty. I'm shooting a fight scene. Would you like to be involved? And he was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and that so was a beautiful he started, thing to He started choreographing it, and then when he realized that I was just not good at shooting a fight scene, he's like, oh, God, I'll do it. <laughs> so that fight scene was it. Scott yeah. by shot. Yeah. Shot by Scott, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned that it was shot obviously between lockdowns and then you yeah. spent lockdowns actually working on the edit. Mm -hmm. Is this one of the faster films you've turned around? Yeah, I mean, just watching it back now, even, you know, with the audience on the big screen, I noticed it was sort of, you know, it's a bit like The Sims. It's like a video game, you know, because you're going from house to house to house, <laughs> bird's eye, house, house, house. It's a little bit, I don't even know, I was a bit like, that's too much, you know? Um, but that was. No, I think that, we needed every one of those shots. <laughs> <laughs> But that was, um, that was COVID, you know, because that's what it was like. It was like, you know, you, you'd, you'd have to sort of sneak off to your mate's house or sneak off to the studio or whatever. So I guess it was just emulating how, what the time was like. Um, but yeah, it was really tricky, man. You know, it, it's it was good really to, tricky. It's refreshing to see a film that was shot, you know, amidst pandemic that doesn't look and doesn't play into that. So, you know, looking at it, you can't tell that, you know, when you shot it, you know, there's Appreciate plenty of people it. around, it looks legitimate. Look, I was having a bit of a laugh, you know, because I love healthy competition, as you know. And uh, I came out, like, in that break, where there was those three months and we shot the film, I kind of came out and sort of rang my mates and said, so, what have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, oh, we're in lockdown again. What are you going to be doing in the next lockdown? Oh, I'll be editing my next film. So I was, <laughs> but it was great, you know, because I had something to do. Do you know what I mean? I just, I was scrambling to get that footage because I thought, fuck, if we go into another lockdown, I'm going to lose it. So at least I'll have the film to wait it. You know what I mean? And that's what I did. And now, Fee, I, I've heard a rumour that apparently Nathan doesn't disclose the entire script to the actors. He may only give them the scenes they're in. Is this true? Crew as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't... This is all new to me. Um, oh, right. So is tonight the first time you've seen the finished film? Yeah, I oh. The, oh, yeah, should, me, yeah. We should reiterate yeah. that. Tonight's the first time anyone's seen it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This is, yeah, for casting yeah. crook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. What'd you think? Uh, <laughs> good. Way to put her on the spot. <laughs> Was it a revelation actually seeing it all kind of come together, see your character fit and mix the greater story? Yeah, well, I mean, it's interesting when you shoot it, you shoot by location and you don't shoot it in order. I think the last. The first scene that we shot was the last scene. That's correct. The, the first shot was was the, her first scene shot yeah. was the last scene in the film. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when it's all put together, yeah, I think there was bits and pieces where I was like, ah, oh, I didn't know I had a miscarriage. Or, I didn't know <laughs> I was pregnant. <laughs> um, really? I don't think you told me that. No. Really? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I I've done this a couple of times. It's a little bit sneaky, but. I find when you direct, you know, it depends on the film and also the cast and the crew and, you know, the, 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 the demographics of it. Um, so in this case, for example, I think I gave you just your scenes. Yeah. But yeah. do it for two reasons. One, I want the actor to just focus on their thing so that when you've got like a love triangle and there is cheating and all the stuff going on, that will emulate better. But also I want the actor, when they see it, to have a little bit of a surprise, something to look forward to. I don't want them to know it inside and out. I want them to also go and have an experience. It's a good idea too, because then they're just focused on their character and they actually don't know at a point whether they are the antagonist or protagonist in the situation and whether they're morally good or bad. You're just sort of throwing them in and then they see the film go, ooh, okay, yeah, I am the worst person in the picture. I am the nasty. <laughs> but also props to dear, because it is true, I have put you in the deep end quite a few times and you've always prevailed. So that's a skill to, to improvise as a DOP. It's not ideal, let's be honest. You'd, you'd, you'd plan it first, which we've done as well, but... Nathan likes to torture me. <laughs> I had the privilege of, of doing a small cameo Woo! in the film, which I'm yes, very Yes, as a police officer. Uh, but but I, was, I, I, I was told that the, none of the dialogue was being used either. So when I saw the film, I was like, oh, you can hear me talking, eh? Oh, we just made that up. <laughs> uh, I liked it. Uh, I want to throw to the crowd to see if there's any questions out there. Has anyone uh, got a burning question? Is it going to be a sequel? Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's funny because someone asked me, who was it, Dave? Who, 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 someone, did someone was ask me about that recently? Yes. <laughs> was it me? Uh, was it me? I pitched you a sequel. I said that the, neither of you could yeah. basically go on without one another, so you would team up and start pulling off, you, you know, yeah, confidence men, kind of, yeah, con jobs together, like dirty, yep. rotten scandals. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's in my mind. It's, it's there. It's bubbling. Um, Fee's someone I would work with again. Um, I think we it's even right. talked about it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, said, yeah. If you said if you do it, yeah. we'll, you know, yeah. we'll do it. Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It was a really good cast and crew. Actually, I will say this too. That, that's probably the smoothest shoot I've ever had. That was, that was, considering it was in between the lockdowns, it was so smooth. Quite a lot of locations too. A lot Back of characters, a lot of locations. Yeah. So you did well in that regard for yeah. a smooth shoot. Look, I, I really, you know, and, and props to you and, and the other cast, but, you know, I, I, I think you're an excellent actor. Um, and also Simay. And also Trish. They're amazing. Woo! Where are you guys? I'll be back. Um, you know, they've been with me forever. They're awesome. Um, and that was another thing about the film. I wanted old school, new school. You know, And also want to thank the um, my new friends. I've got a few new friends in the audience, new talent. I know who you are for coming tonight. Um, yeah, so, uh, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Have we got any other questions out there? Yes, Paul? You, know, you said uh, before, you, you, you said, oh, you can laugh. Before yes. Like, can, can you talk about that? I mean, what yes. was, was the idea to be like a lightweight a drama? Or, or, or not lightweight drama, but uh, yeah, like to play for Yeah, I mean, get too serious yeah, my, my whole thing is, is that, you know, it's a movie. You know, it's, it's not real. And uh, I don't like people, you know, what, I don't think anyone should watch films and go into serious at all. It's got to be entertainment. Um, you know, it's a kitchen sink drama, but it's, it's supposed to be a funny one. You know, they, you, know you, hear the, you see this in the newspaper, you know, oh, another Australian kitchen sink drama. Oh, fuck me, I'd rather hang myself. You know, this, this was kind of that, but it was with my spin, you know. So when I said laugh, I said, don't be afraid, you know, because I, I think it was funny. I was, I was surprised tonight. I had a lot of laughs. It was, it was great. You know, sweeping legs since 84, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to laugh there. Yeah. So the crew I, loved you know, that line. I want you to have you know, as much fun as what I had making it, I guess. If, if I did that, then I've succeeded. 
Yeah. Yeah, but thank you. Nice question. And Mark? Well, I've known Nathan for a long time and he's helped me out a lot. And I know he can't sit still and not make another film. So <laughs> yeah. so what's he going to do next? Or, or how many films do you think you want to reach? You know, like, yeah. what's the number you want to get to? Great question, my man. 50? Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> I was watching a thing on uh, Hitchcock recently and he said all directors have probably got 12. You know? Yeah, right. Um, I'm sure I announced this does, now. does that include sequels, though? Well, or is a, that just 12 original films and you could potentially do another 12? <laughs> 10 erotic thrillers, you know. Um, but, uh, no, good question. But I think because I've acted in so many and co-produced so many, 10 is not really the number. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think uh, I spoke to a friend recently and he was like, oh, my God, you know, you didn't know the film. You're, you're crazy, you know, you're serious. And I said, mate, it's just it's what I do, right? I've been doing it forever and I'll probably do it as long as I can. Um, but I will announce, now that you've asked, um, I've, I'm halfway through my 11th. What? Disconnected? No, not disconnected. Hang on, does Dean yeah. not even know about this? No, I mean, this is, a, this is, a, this is my red herring. Oh, oh. Now well, you know why I've been okay. so stressed out. Um, Hang on. <laughs> so you're working on a new film right now? Right now, now as we speak, Dia and I are one day off our next feature, which is Disconnected, that I'm acting in. She's directing. But I've secretly been shooting my 11th and I'm half white. That is amazing what? news. <laughs> can, you, can you just give us a little something? No can you just tell us, is it going to be an erotic thriller? Is it a return to action? Is it a return to horror? Is it an entirely new genre? Do you know what it is? I can't say too much, but it's nothing you would guess. It's a completely really? new genre that I've It's not a period drama, is it? Oh, I, 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 can't, I can't see myself in tights with the... Ye old Nathan! Uh, no. yeah. <laughs> That's mind-blowing. Yeah, it's a, it's a new genre, yeah. and I haven't done it before, and it's a very different film, and I've been chipping away and doing it all under the radar, and there's a few people here tonight that are actually working on this film. Um, Incredible. But yeah. I'm halfway. Get him a drink at the bar and see if they'll <laughs> spill the beans on it a little bit. Yeah. Are you shocked, Ian? Because you've been working with Nathan on your own film this, yeah, this well, entire time. Yeah, well, Disconnected's kind of our film, so... Yeah. Yeah. Film. Okay. I always thought Nathan was stressed because of Disconnected, because, you know, I, I am all the time. So that makes a lot more sense. Okay. And actually on that, how is it in terms of when the dynamic changes, when you're the director and, you know, he's an actor and how does... What's the situation like? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of trust, isn't it, Dee? Trust, yes. Take me in your arms, do with me what you will. I, my filming... The way I go about filming things uh, is a lot different. Disconnected is my third directorial feature. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah. I'm going to talk for it, but thank you. Um, so, yeah, the way I go about directing and producing is a bit different to Nathan. So, at first, we were letting <laughs> hands a lot. Just a, just, a tad. Just, a, just a tad. Luckily, uh, my lovely partner, Daniel, was there to be like, you're both idiots. Stop talking. Just take a breather and then come back. That seems to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, now that we're love hate, <laughs> love love hate, love hate. Yeah, I always said we work well but, together because we can tell each other off. Well, that's true, and we yeah. also know that nothing easy is probably going to be that good. Mm. Yeah. Well, let, let's say let's say you know hard times means hopefully good product. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's and Dean's great to work with and it's, it's great. I, I mean, so. I, a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of people have actually over the years come at me and said, you know, oh, you're making a film. Oh, and, and you're acting, you know, like it's a bad thing. You know, and that kind of, kind of pissed me off because like it's low end, you know, and, and quite often I've, I've run castings and I've brought guys in and they've kind of been not understood what I'm trying to do or maybe they don't have as many credits as I already do or the distributor I'm with says, no, 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 Nathan, no, you do what I do. Fuck, fuck that guy. Like, you know, there's so many things, you know, in, involved in that process. Um, but in this film, I wanted to, uh, I don't want to direct it. I just wanted it to be directed. Yeah, it so. was, the film was actually Nathan's idea. He came to me, he's like, I want to make a film, but I don't want to direct it. I'm like, well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've dabbled in that. Um, and yeah, we built the script together. And yeah, after it's almost a year of shooting and yeah. 90, oh. 10, 20 days of shooting, we're off about to wrap. Well, we have a last day on Sunday. Oh, great. Um, great. Any other but, questions um, out there? Sorry, yeah. I was just going to finish up by saying, that um, I'm very selective of directors I have worked with, though, Mark being one. Um, and uh, and oh, I won't talk about all the 
other guys, but they're very selective, you know. Yeah, Mark, there's a few, there's a few, Mark did one of the music videos for Revenge of the Guaylo? Yeah, Mark and I yeah. have done heaps of stuff yeah. together. We've probably done 10 or plus more jobs as well. Yeah, we've done heaps. Cult Girls being the oh, being the big one. Were you, you were casting on Cult Casting, Girls, Mark's, director, Mark's and film that he wrote and directed. And he gave me a cameo, but I got a mask on. <laughs> like, uh, How dare you? You're alright, but not, not in my movie. No. <laughs> Is there any other questions out there amongst the audience? Yes. I want to know um, when you've got a new actor like Pete that's going to be in a NHP production. Do you do you ask them to watch your previous films? Do you want them to be influenced by your previous work? And Pete, did you watch any of Pete's previous work before you did the decision? Yes. Yeah, he did send me a link to one of his previous films and I did watch it, yes. I did my homework. <laughs> Great question, 110%. So I will, I mean, obviously I auditioned her, but if I had someone specific in mind, I would say, have a look at my catalogue. This is what I do, you're interested. Um, but even in the audition, I still would give you, that was homework. Yeah. So I, check check out check out my films. I I that one was Model Behaviour that she got, because it was in a similar vein. Um, it depends. It's case by case. So with Trish, when we did Guaylo, it was probably some martial arts. You know, it depends. Yeah, but definitely, 100%. Um, it's flattering when they've already watched the films. In fact, that's one of my questionnaire when I do casting. It's like, have you seen an NHP film? Do you know who I am at all? Do you know, are you on the radar? You know, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I feel like it's also good to know his style and the way he does things. So you can kind of suit, you know, act to suit your style, basically. Has a yeah, it, it, it's very specific, isn't yeah. it? And it's quite difficult because, you know, and, and I guess all filmmakers go through this, you know, you have your own films, your own style of films, your own genre. Not everyone's going to vibe to you. That's okay. Um, I think, uh, Maddie, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I think it's, that's part of, the, part of the journey, you know, trying to figure it out. Um, and also learning that not everyone's going to like you, you know, and that's, I'm a very personable person, aren't I, Leslie? I like to be liked. Um, I will listen to anybody, you know. I, I haven't had anyone say to my face they hate me. <laughs> but, you know, I try. <laughs> Maybe I've got a few knives in the back. But, you know, I like to think people like me. And uh, and if they don't, well, you know, that's that's fine. And it's the same with your films, you know. If you don't like the films, don't fucking do it. You know, that's the other thing, too. I had someone recently on a film sort of came on board, then started complaining. It's not what you think. Um, and uh, I was like, why did you fucking sign on? Like, you know, now we're spending money, now we're on the schedule, we've got time, we've got fucking, you know? And they're like, oh, yeah, you know. It's like, dude, like, and to all the actors out there, you know, what I mean? like, like, do the fucking research and only do it if you really want to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, on that note, we might wrap so these guys can get, well, you did you see one more question, did you? Is someone got a question right at the back there somewhere? We got out of the kitchen on the next one, buddy. <laughs> no, man, not at all. Is it a musical? I actually hate musicals. Sorry, Jack. It's my worst genre, except for Grease. And I've met Travolta, and he's the nicest celebrity I've met in my life. What about the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show? You hate that as well? Rocky Horror I grew up with, so I can't hate it. It's okay. sort of, oh, you know, right. yeah. Phantom of the Paradise? No. You don't like that one? I it's a classic. A I portrait. Is it a musical? No, but it has music. It's got probably music because you did it, but it's not a musical. Is there any uh, last questions? Yes, just up there. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yeah. yeah, intentional. Trish and I talked about that, didn't we? She was like, um, is he supposed to be wearing the same jacket on day two and day three? <laughs> no, uh, it was intentional because um, I saw this film once, I can't remember which one it was, the guy had a condition. I did look it up. This was, That's a great question. Um, it was part of my research for me to find my character. He was one of the guys that had like, you know, the same pairs of jeans and the same coloured shirts and the same jacket, you know. I never got a chance to do that closet shot where you sort of opened it up. And in a way, that was his, that was the only thing that was concrete for him. You know, that was his, like, it was the only thing that was routine, like a stability. 
Um, and I looked, I researched and found there's a condition for that. I can't remember it right now, but that was part of my character. So yeah, that was intentional. He's one of those guys that wore the stained suit. You know. It was great for continuity shooting. <laughs> it made it easier. <laughs> it wasn't a budget thing. It wasn't because we couldn't afford two suits. <laughs> Three suits, maybe. Three, I don't three. know. Well, I think this movie plays out of technically it's like five, six days. Right. Yeah, right. it's not actually that long. Yeah. yeah, she got engaged in that sexual activity pretty fast after that miscarriage then, folks. No, just kidding. Anyway, we've got to wrap up the questions now, only because we've got to do some photos with the man uh, by the media wall. So can we get a round of applause for all the talent?